Hey, this is Christina Aguilera, and welcome to Sessions at AOL. Hey, this is Christina Aguilera, and welcome to Sessions at AOL. Up until now, Christina Aguilera has built a career around her powerful singing voice. From her contribution to the Disney animated feature Mulan, to her back-to-back chart-topping singles What a Girl Wants and Genie in a Bottle, to her contribution on Lady Marmalade for the Moulin Rouge soundtrack, she's faithfully executed crowd-pleasing interpretations of other people's songs. Now at 21, she's boldly venturing into uncharted territory with the release of Stripped, an album showcasing her first real attempt at songwriting. I was 17 years old when the whole pop phenomenon thing kind of was at its peak, and, you know, Jeannie was a smash that, you know, kind of fit in perfectly with all of that. And um, I really got caught up in it, and, you know, I mean, God, dude, all I've ever dreamed about was getting in front of a crowd, a huge crowd, and them hearing, you know, uh, or getting to hear them sing my lyrics back to me, just amazing, you know, and, and getting to do all that. But at the same time, after a while, you know, with the media and, and the press kind of categorizing you into something that you're really not, it was just like, okay, what's going on here? Because <laughs> I really didn't 
feel like I was that person, you know, at all. And that's why, you know, I had to really strip everything down to me. Okay, like, okay, I'm making this record about me for the first time, and and like it or not, I'm gonna go insane if I have to do this <laughs> shtick or this routine, you know, again of trying to play something I'm not. You know, I just I wanted to be, I want to be a real artist, and I want to make real music and 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 write lyrics that speak to people. After the massive success she enjoyed over the last few years, she felt it was important to take some time off to plan her next move. I wanted to disappear for a while. Actually, after I did the Ricky Martin duet with him a while back, um, I was going to take that break and then, uh, you know, basically go into writing and recording the record. But then Moulin Rouge came up, and that would kind of was kind of a success for me. And uh, that was a, a crazy, fun, fun, fun project, and getting it to be with those girls and work with Rock Wilder it was the first time. Um, I had a great, great time doing that. And uh, then after that, you know, that created a lot of hype. I, I really needed to disappear for a minute and get my thoughts straight, collect all the poems and, and uh, um, lyrics that I had been writing on my last tour and kind of sit down and really create my vision for this record and go for it. So, Her next step was to take control over the making of the new release from the ground up. This album I co-produced, I'm executive producer, so, so, so happy that it's really my thing now. It's like my baby. So um, I'm, I'm really, really thrilled that, you know, um, this, is, this is my heart, basically, you know. And uh, um, I had to get the right team of people around me who got it, who weren't trying to go for, say, Genie in a Bottle Part 2, you know, who definitely got where I was trying to go and... Um, the message that I was trying to come across uh, with this record, which is ultimately positive, I think, and, um, you know, uplifting, I think, on a whole, lyrically, you know. I mean, Dirty being the first single, it's kind of a misrepresentation of what the rest of the album sounds like or portrays lyrically. Then why the choice to release Dirty as the first single? Dirty's my comeback song, you know, it's just, it reflects also, you know, another personal side of me, which is, you know, the side where I'm a 21-year-old girl who, you know, t turning 21 in the past year have been out in the club scene more and you know getting a chance to be with your friends and kind of living it up and I'm only young once so you know and kind of um, you know in the video portraying that as well and but really calling it dirty also reflects not necessarily you know people of course put a sexual connotation to it especially with the video or whatever but really it's about almost um, almost like a street term to me where it's like I'm not afraid to get a little unpretty or roughed up or you know in the video I'm boxing you know it's like a tough sexy kind of thing at the same time you know where yeah I don't mind to get my elbows scraped up or whatever as long as I'm having a good time and having fun and you know just getting a little bit crazy you know and while her new single and its accompanying video have had a divisive impact on critics and audiences alike she takes the reviews in stride both the good and the bad I just basically concentrate on what I feel is right for me, you know, as an artist and, and how I really want to come across. And if they don't like, especially on this record, because it is so personal, I mean, I love this record. I really do. It's it's a part of me. It's my heart. And, you know, no matter what people say about it in the future or whatever, I just, I'm not, I refuse to pay too much attention to it, you know, because there are always going to be people that are trying to be negative just to be negative. And um, otherwise, not everyone's going to love you. Not everyone's going to love what you do, what you put out there, what you wear, what you sound like. And so you just have to be yourself in the end because there's no way you're going to please everybody at the same time. Christina Aguilera, look for the new album Stripped from RCA Records. To see and hear more interviews and great live performances of all styles, check out AOL Keyword Sessions. We would like to thank the following AOL members for submitting questions used in this session. Hey, this is Christina Aguilera and welcome to Sessions at AOL.
Hey, this is Christina Aguilera. Welcome to AOL Music. The new album from Christina Aguilera is stripped in more ways than one. A lot of these songs um, really speak the truth. You know, every single song has a certain, or reflects a certain event or time or, or you know, experience in my past. And, um, you know, I think definitely after the listener um, walks away from hearing the record, I think they'll definitely get a better viewpoint of, of where I'm coming from or trying to come from as an artist. And... Um, and it's just about being more real. You know, that's where Shift also came from. I just wanted it to be a real, honest record. AOL member Cali5-627 to wanted to know which of the 16 new songs was the most revealing for her. The most personal song and the most difficult song for me to record um, was a song called I'm OK, which is a song that is about my, um, my childhood and my past and growing up um, reflecting things that went on in my family, my house, with my father, and, you know, um, I felt that it was really, really important, not only as a healing process for me to speak about this and get the message out there to others who might be going through it, but to be that kind of um, uh, a place where people could come to, or, you know, females, children, whoever, to listen to the song and know that somebody else has been through it. It breaks my heart to know that, you know, this hap it's a, such a hush-hush subject because it is something, domestic violence that happens in the home and whatnot. So, um, you know, and it, it breaks my heart to, to have gone through that myself and to know that others are going through it. So that is the other reason why I chose to make such a personal song, write about a, such a personal subject. For her part, singing such personal lyrics made the recording process unbearable at times. Crying through it didn't want to do it at first and Linda Perry the producer actually really pushed me to go ahead and, and get behind that mic and, and see what came out and um, really there's a one take vocal of, um, of a really really hard um, really thing to get through but happy I did in the end. Linda Perry who's best known for her work with the early 90's band Four Nine Blondes helped produce the album with Aguilera and ended up contributing one of its standout songs. I made it clear to everybody, I'm writing this record, you know, I have certain vision, and nobody else is going to get my points across the way I can. But when I heard her sing beautiful and write it, at this, play it at the piano, it just spoke to me so much, and it fit in so well lyrically to so many other, you know, uh, songs that I, I had written on this record that I was like, okay, hey, there's no way I'm going to let somebody else get that song, you know, because it really spoke to me, and I wanted to interpret it, so... Um, I, I was like, you got to give me this song, and I knew other people had actually begged her for the song, and she had said no, and it was a really special song to her, and I, I got it. I got it. So I was really, really excited that she actually gave it to me, and um, I'm, I'm thankful for that. I love this song, and it's almost like I feel like an anthem for people, for anybody, to be able to look yourself in the mirror no matter what and say that I'm beautiful no matter what people say, no matter what people do. It's, you know, an anthem for me, too. You know, obviously everyone goes through some form of discrimination or, or hard times where, you know, people won't accept you, and um, I think that's a great song for everybody to... Uh, to kind of uh, relate to. Another contributing writer was Alicia Keys, the winner of last year's Grammy for Best New Artist, an award given to Aguilera the previous year. Christina says it was Keys' song, Fallen, that won her over. She had such a soulful voice, and it seemed like she was more into, you know, um, conveying emotion on her music and on her records rather than, you know, having a poppy or, or a hooky hit, which I respect. And um, with not too many people that can actually vocally, you know, do it out there and live, I had much respect for her. So I um, wanted to team up with her, wanted to maybe do something together, and I heard back she wanted to do something too. Um, so happy about it. I flew out to New York to work with her, and we worked at uh, actually Jimi Hendrix Studio, Electric Lady Studios, which was really, really cool. And um, sat down at the piano, played me some ideas she had of hers, and one of them was Impossible. And um, I just loved, loved that song so much that I was like, okay, let's, let's work with this one. So uh, we took that idea, and we definitely um, played around with it, and um, that's the result of working with Alicia. And I ended up walking away from that project being an even bigger fan. Such a sweet, sweet young lady, and so focused and driven and just... Um, so, so smart. I, I really uh, I have much respect for her. It's passion that Aguilera points to as a driving force for anyone considering a career in music. 
She responded to a question from AOL member Hudak Justin's girl, an up-and-coming singer who wanted to know the best way to further her own career. It's, if it's what you really want to do, I mean, if it's your dream, go for it. You know, absolutely, you know, find out ways you can get involved and, and um, perform, you know, publicly or, or otherwise, or write your own music. That's the biggest thing, you know. Um, it's such a great form of uh, expression and, and being able to let out emotion. And um, it's, it's great, you know, go for it 100% and, uh, and do it. That's the kind of advice she got as a child growing up with a supportive mother. And how does her mom feel about the new direction she's taking in her professional life? My mom, everyone behind me is so 100% supportive. And that means so much, you know, to, to have that support. It's, 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 really, it's really important to me. Um, making sure that my mom is cool with what I'm doing and she knows that I'm an artist and I'm an entertainer and she has great belief in my talents and um, always is there to support me and she always thinks that I make the right decisions you know and um, um, she I think she's really really you know happy my, my family my friends they all they all make sure they, they support me hundred percent and they tell me the truth too if they don't think I'm doing you know something that that isn't right you know I'm glad that I have people that will also tell me you know well maybe you shouldn't do that or blah blah blah, blah or tell me the consequences but knowing who I am and what I'm about they you know they're all for it hundred percent and they're happy so happy that I'm finally getting to be the real me this time Christina Aguilera Look for the new album, Stripped, from RCA Records. To see and hear more interviews and great live performances of all styles, check out AOL keyword, Sessions. We would like to thank the following AOL members for submitting questions used in this session. Hey, this is Christina Aguilera, and welcome to Sessions at AOL.
Let's go.